Hello and welcome to another episode of the Triomechanics podcast. This podcast is the third in the series about the microbiome and it's focused on what we are doing to our microbiome that is causing so many problems. Essentially, how are we affecting our microbiome adversely in our kind of modern life? And then that's going to lead on to the, the kind of fourth podcast, which will talk about what we can do to try and sort it out. So obviously, a lot of these things, one of the first things we can do when it comes to these things is think about whether we can remove them, whether we can um, start putting uh, essentially negating practices in. I'm going to be talking about that throughout this podcast. So what are we doing to our microbiome These in this kind of modern world which seems to be impacting on, on it? And, and the key thing to remember with this is that everyone is very different. It all depends on where you, you're coming from, where you started off from. Um, we know now that there's a lot of things that may have happened in our history as adults um, that, that may significantly have impacted our microbiome. And what they may have done is they may have made it a lot more fragile. We have made it uh, an ability to change um, and less robust. Some people have very robust microbiomes. They have huge amounts of all the right bacterial species. They have good, it's like a rainforest. They have all the right bits and pieces. They have all the, the different animals and plants that are living there and they're all in perfect harmony. And some people, because of, for whatever reason, they may have started off with a relatively barren rainforest. So they've got overgrowth of certain bacteria and they may still be okay if things are all kept in check, but it's much more likely that they're going to get problems. Now, unfortunately, these things are things we can't change. We can't go back into our history and for instance, not have had uh, a birth from caesarean section. We know that's a real problem because a lot of our microbiome is laid down during birth, during the uh, essentially the passage through the vagina particularly because we essentially pick up a lot of the bacteria that colonise our gut from that area as we go through. We pick up a lot from the mother's microbiome through various processes and it's very difficult. And we know now that countries that, that have gone more towards having C-sections like Brazil are having huge amounts of problems because of this. So now they're doing research into seeing whether techniques such as swabbing um, and then basically swabbing the baby after a C-section with the, the mother's microbiome can help uh, recolonize things in a the way they should do. We also know that breastfeeding has a massive impact on this. Actually, when you breastfeed, you have bacteria within the breast milk but the things within breast milk, there's something called galacto oligosaccharide, and is actually a company now called Bimuno are selling this because it's real. We realise that it preferentially chooses to grow um, bispifidum and the kind of acidophilus and the lactobacillus type species um, provide, by providing them exactly what they want. But it's a type of fuel. It's a bit like the inulin, and we're going to talk about that later on. Is that we're giving them that exact fuel. Um, and that they, they're the ones that like that more than anything else, so therefore it helps them grow. The way I like to think about it when it comes to fuel, and I'll go over this before my favourite analogy that I've come up with um, regarding this, is imagine you've got two cats, but you never see them. All you ever do is feed them. And you'll start to notice that um, you, and when you do occasionally see them, they, off in the distance, that one cat looks a little bit bigger than the other one. And that starts to get worse and worse. Now, that is a kind of snapshot that you may never have with your microbiome. That's the kind of idea of maybe you've got some symptoms that are coming up. Now, this is what's going on with your bacteria. Is that you don't see them, but you're feeding them all the time. The problem is, is that what's going on and you didn't see it was that the big cat was taking all the food away from the little cat. And the little cat was getting gradually more and more um, weedy as it was really struggling to get any food at all. Now... Anyone that's had cats in the past that's had the, the name as that cat that comes and steals the food, one of the ways you can actually get round it or one of the ways you can sort it out is by through a process of elimination possibly, you can try and work out what food that cat doesn't like and that your cat does so that you can with confidence put that food down that your cat will eat it and that your um, the, the neighbour's cat won't. So that's the critical thing when it comes to um, choosing the right kind of food for your bacteria. You want to give them something that only they want, the good bacteria want, and the bad bacteria would happily leave behind. Because that means that you're then boosting the levels of your good bacteria and not essentially boosting the levels of the nasty ones. So going back to what I was starting off saying is that in terms of what we've done, so I'm going to give a brief overview of this. I'm not going to really go into too much depth because I don't want to keep these 
podcast too long, but I'm going to give you a brief idea of what we've been doing to our microbiome that may be causing adverse problems. And it's in no particular order because we don't really know how bad these effects are and how essentially how potent each of them are. So for instance, one of the first ones is the use of pesticides and various um, chemicals on our crops. And this can actually be seen worse in, in the consumption of, of particularly green leafy vegetables and salad vegetables and, and things like tomatoes are one of the worst that we get from Spain. The, uh, there's a massive list of all the, uh, the most, essentially the, the worst um, pesticide damaged crops. And most of them are things like oranges and lemons and limes and various other um, fruits that come from Spain and Morocco and various other places because they're sprayed with very horrible chemicals so they can make the journey across. So it's always best to try and get close to you. If you can go for organic, that's better. But often things like the, the root veg are generally well protected, so you don't need to worry too much about things like root veg. Just think about things like green leafy stuff. It is worth going for that because not only could it actually affect the plant, obviously the pesticides can affect you, but we know that the, the pesticides can affect the microbiome as well. They can actually cause overgrowth and changes within the microbiome that cause the kind of dysbiosis and the overgrowth of, of essentially the bad species. The other one is, is vegetable oils and, and mega six oils. So your kind of vegetable oil, canola oil and all those kind of oils, not olive oil. Not olive oil is mostly monounsaturates. And or has um, enough antioxidants in that it doesn't have this effect. So proper pressed cold extra virgin oil is fantastic. But and that's actually very good for the microbiome as are omega-3 oils. So fish and seafood and that side of things. But your omega-6 oils from your canola oil, from your vegetable oil, from your cotton seed and your kind of general cooking oils. They actually can promote the growth of E. coli and the gram negative bacteria, which are the bacteria we don't really want. But they can also damage the populations of Acomantia and Bifidum bacteria, the ones that we really do want, which are actually conversely enhanced the other way around by the omega threes. So by getting more omega three, and we're doing we're having a two stage process, we're enhancing the good bacterial growth and not um, essentially affecting the or not um, enhancing the growth of the bad bacteria. So the other thing we've been doing is we haven't really been feeding them very well. We feed them a lot of, of sugar, um, which they don't really like very much. We're not really feeding those kind of starches that are the, the kind of more soluble, gloopy starches that aren't really part of our diet as much anymore. So things like in beans, the, the beta glucan that you get from oats and those sort of things. So it's those kind of starches. I'm going to be talking about that more in the next episode when I talk about how you really try and enhance your microbiome. But it's that we're not really giving the right kind of starches. We think about kind of um, fibre as kind of roughage, so the kind of green and the, the cellulose and things like that. And that's actually, whilst some of that is broken down, very little of that is actually broken down by those bacteria. They tend to like the gloopy, more soluble starches. So that's when we when we kind of uh, ignore the kind of beige carbs we've been told through recently, things like potatoes, actually, we could be badly affecting our microbiome by not giving them some of these more soluble starches that are in those foods. So the other thing that we've been doing is obviously stress. Stress has a significant impact on the microbiome. We know that with increased stress, it changes the microbiome. We actually, so that's another good thing, another good reason to try and relax, try and meditate and do everything you can to reduce the stress of your life because it actually can adversely affect your gut microbiome. So that is a definitely another big one. So all these things tend to come uh, essentially put like little bits and pieces that actually really kind of affect all these different bits that we're trying to do is things like um, going on the, uh, the kind of low carb diet and if you're going for a kind of full carnival diet that can significantly starve some of the really good bacteria and that's what is quite worrying about those kind of diets in that actually we need to remember that um, whilst they might appear um, efficacious in the short term they essentially might negate the uh, the long term. Well, essentially, there's a, a significant problem in the long term with not feeding the good bacteria that actually can cause more problems. The other major one that I've mentioned is, or two major ones, antibiotics, which are overuse of antibiotics, particularly when we're children. Which is not saying we can do anything about in the past, but maybe we need to think about in the future. Is if we've got a little bit of a scratchy cold then maybe thinking that we won't go to the GP just in case they say, oh, well, we'll give you antibiotics just in case. We suddenly they're definitely trying to not do now. There's a big push to stop that. However, we need to take charge of that. And actually, these little infections, they will take care of themselves generally. And we don't really need antibiotics, and they are mostly viral. 
So there really is no need, and it's just adding to that problem. But actually, the, the knock-on effect from those antibiotics to our own microbiome could be very bad. The other thing is things like um, hypercleanliness. We're cleaning everything with disinfectants, and it really isn't necessary. We use a little bit of, of kind of antibacterial uh, on the, 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 uh, the meat chopping boards once we've used them. Other than that, very little antibacterial stuff gets used. We use something called Method, which has got a, a little bit of a, a kind of natural oils in it, which is naturally antibacterial. Um, with, and, and so actually, you know, kind of the citrus oils. And that's what we use for very small amounts of it. We don't really use very much of it because I think everyone has got a bit hyper clean. And we're becoming hyper clean. We're actually taking in a lot of those disinfectants. And that could be, again, at the end of the day, they're antibacterial. So they are killing off our microbiome. The other final one is the lack of things like fermented foods. We we traditionally would have had fermented foods in our diet. I'm going to talk about this a little more in the next episode because that's about how you get more bacteria in and the right kind of bacteria. But not having those fermented foods in, not sourdough bread, sauerkraut, kimchi and all those things have impacted because they they often give a lot, not just the bacteria, but they give a lot of the food for those bacteria, the signaling molecules and the things which enhance the general growth and essentially the good function of your gut, your microbiome. So that's just a brief overview of some things that we've been doing. So you can think about trying to reduce things like pesticides in your diet by moving towards the more organic. Choosing the right kind of foods to go organic is very important so that we use the right, have the right use of resources and money. So having a look at the current pesticide lists um, for the UK, which I'll post up underneath the podcast in the show notes. Have a look at that, see if you can remove some of the things at the top of the list. Moving to things like organic oats is quite important because they are not much more expensive, yet they're a massive pesticide risk in, or they have massive pesticide residues, whereas, and moving to kind of more organic um, breads and things and sourdoughs and that side of things so that when you have those things, they don't cause us an uh, effect. They actually have a positive effect by providing that fiber. And then trying to reduce things, obviously reducing things like stress, reducing um, sugar in the diet, um, but also things essentially reducing the the likelihood of you having uh, things like antibiotics and that side of things. And also possibly reducing this this kind of hyper cleanliness so you don't need to antibacterial everything in your world. You just need to maybe do it on the kind of raw meats um, that have been put on, on the sides and those side of things, but not needing to do it all the time. And that's a good start to, to get you kicking off to trying to stop the current or the constant damage to your current microbiome before we start thinking about how we kind of repair it and how we start feeding some of the good stuff in there. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.